What is up fashion divas? Welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing great. I am so excited to announce that my Bratz doll portrait is completed. I recorded the whole process for you guys from start to finish. I hope you enjoy. So I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with Bratz dolls. They were a huge hit in the early 2000s. So I don't know much of the history for Bratz dolls. But according to Google, Bratz is an American fashion doll and media franchise created by a Mr. Carter Bryant, released on May 21st, 2001, and these dolls were a huge hit. I'm sure a lot of you remember seeing these plastered on school bags, lunch boxes, pencil cases, you name it, these gals were on it. I'm sure some of you remember nagging your parents for one of these dolls, I certainly did. But these dolls were mad expensive, but I remember one of my sisters buying me one of the Bratz boys. I actually lost him a few years ago, but it would have been nice to have him for this video. I can't remember if this is the exact one I had, but he looks very similar to this one. He was cute. My absolute favorite Bratz doll was Yasmin. What I liked about these dolls were they represented all ethnicities, and I thought she looked like me a little bit. I remember clearly owning two of these exact same binders. I was able to find the image on Google, and guys, I would keep drawing them over and over again, even in the middle of class, like I would not pay attention. I started off tracing them until I was able to start drawing them on my own by just referencing the image. I swear my teachers thought there was something wrong with me. I could clearly remember one time in a parent meeting conference, a teacher looked at my mom right in front of me and said, I think there's something wrong with her ears. She just keeps singing and drawing in the middle of class. Clearly it was worth it because I remember in grade 6 graduation, I was the only one to get called up to receive a little plaque that said Best Achievement Award in Art. And I tell you guys, I was so proud that day because I never received awards in anything in school. I've always known I wanted to go to art school, but that day just solidified my decision. Unfortunately, the nearest art school to me was downtown, which was a little bit far. There was also a long waiting list, and it was mad expensive. So clearly it was for the wealthiest students. I was a little bit naive, you guys. I remember doing my research on the internet, checking out which high school I wanted to go to. But unfortunately, my path was already planned out by our finances. Clearly, that never stopped me, though, because I just kept drawing. Certain things you just need to learn on your own. Thankfully, though, the support was always there at home, and I always had access to all the art supplies I needed. I went through so many of these art supply kits growing up, and though a lot of people online tend to bash the quality of them, I personally wouldn't because they helped me so much. And we all need to start from somewhere. Growing up, art and music for me was more than a hobby. It was really a part of my life, and it kept me really busy, and it kept me out of trouble. And for that, I am so thankful for this talent, because I don't know how I would have ended up. So without further ado, before this gets all long and cheesy, I'm going to show you the photo that I'm going to reference for this drawing. Here it is. They are so adorable. Here I'm going to go ahead and measure the paper just to give you guys an idea of how large this is. This is by far the largest artwork that I made. And it is 40 by 26 inches. I'm going to make this using markers and pencil crayons. Here I'm going to lay all of them out. I tried getting the proportions right, and I had to play around with it a lot to make sure it fits perfectly. After drawing them in a large sketchbook, I went ahead and traced them on some tracing paper. I measured the space that I would be putting the letters on, and I drew them out in alphabetical order. The girls with a passion for fashion! Brats! I got all the letters down packed, so now I'm just going to go ahead and put them together on a sketchbook. Maybe next time I'll just use like a transfer paper. I just couldn't find any in the size that I needed. Tracing paper works just as good, it's just a little bit longer the steps. And to avoid flipping the writing around, I traced on it, and then I traced the back of the tracing paper, and then I placed it on the actual paper where I'm doing the artwork on. And I notice when you trace on tracing paper and remove it, you're going to see the outline of everything. I don't know if you know what I mean, but anyway, I'll show you in another video. The next step now is to outline everything. I like to outline everything in black. 
I messed up on the O there, but I'm going to go back and fix it. When I'm finally done tracing everything, I could finally start coloring it in. And I decided to go in with this beautiful lime green. And I don't know about you guys, but I like to go over everything that I do in marker with pencil crayons. I find it seals everything in and it gets rid of all the streaks. For this artwork, I did a lot of outlining. And I like to outline everything before I go in with pencil crayons because when you go over the lines with pencil crayons, it's harder to outline. The ink does not come out the pen as easy. The skin tones were a bit of a challenge for me. I did spend a lot of time just matching the colors together. I found more than one reference for this photo and the skin tones looked a little bit different in each of them. So it's a little bit hard to pick them out. But yeah, I just had to spend a lot of time eyeballing it. I wanted all the colors to really match as closely as possible to the original. And I can't remember if it was a pencil case I had or a binder that had this exact same image on it, but I would draw this one over and over again. Drawing for me is just an impulse that I cannot control and I've come to terms with it. Megan is now completed, now we're moving on to Miss Sasha. Drawing this pose was such a challenge. Because they have such itty bitty bodies and big heads and big feet, I really wanted to get the bodies right. She is looking so fierce, I just love how the green matches the blue jeans. The shoes were a little bit of a challenge because a few of them have gold shoes and I didn't want to go over it again with the same shade of gold. So here I'm using my Hemi gouache. This paper is not made for paint but I don't think it will do anything because it's just a little bit. And now we are moving on to Miss Chloe. Chloe's hair was the easiest. I just went over with the lightest shade of yellow marker that I have and used different shades of pencil crayons for the highlights.
Moving on now to Miss Jade. I just love these poses. They look like they're dancing. Now we're moving on to Miss Yasmin. Her outfit was the easiest to draw. Now to sum it all up before and after. Now I'm moving on to the logo and I wanted it to have a pink outline and I want it to look really glittery. So I'm starting off with a yellow base. And I'm going to go over with a whole bunch of dots. Now it's time to design the floor or stage that they are standing on, so I decided to go with a zebra print. And I wanted to go ahead with colors that I haven't used already, so I went with orange. Now it's time to go ahead with the background. And guys, I'm a little OCD with my backgrounds. I have to really fill everything in. I went ahead and stuck some little rhinestones and butterflies on the background. Now I'm going to go in with some little hearts because I don't want to leave any empty spaces. And here I'm sticking on my rhinestones. And voila! Finally! It's completed! Yes! 
Thank you guys so much for watching. For more Fashion Diva fun, be sure to like, share, follow, and subscribe. Later!